Trappist 1 is a dim red dwarf about 41 light years away from Earth. At about 9% the mass of the Sun and only slightly bigger than Jupiter in radius, the star is just barely big enough to even be considered a star at all. If it didn't have any planets, it wouldn't be considered anything particularly noteworthy. But Trappist 1 does have planets, and a lot of them. In 2017, the star was observed by the Trappist telescope, where two planets were originally discovered. Five additional planets were discovered soon after. This star, which was originally designated 2 mass J23062928 0502285, was something special. So, it was renamed to Trappist 1 to avoid that unholy abomination of a name, and studies quickly began on the planets. All seven of Trappist 1's planets are about the size of Earth, but all the videos I've seen about them don't go into much depth. When mentioning Trappist 1, people seem to exclusively talk about its potential for life, skipping everything we actually know about these worlds. I want to change this. Welcome to the second episode of my Grand Tour series, where I go over individual stellar systems and their planets in more depth. Episode 1 of this series, A Grand Tour of Alpha Centauri, is linked in the description. Trappist 1 is an extremely interesting system, but there's dozens of other systems equally as interesting, if not more so. So, if you have any systems you think deserve their own episode, put them in the comments. With that out of the way, there's a few things we need to know about the star before we talk about the planets. Trappist 1 is a red dwarf, and an old one. The estimated age of the system is somewhere between 5 and 9 billion years old, meaning Trappist 1 is ancient. Because of this, it's calmer than most red dwarfs, like the notoriously deadly Proxima Centauri. That star has probably stripped away the atmospheres and oceans of Proxima b, if it ever had them in the first place. So, the planets of Trappist 1 have a higher chance of having atmospheres than most red dwarfs currently. But, Trappist 1 was likely much more active in the past, meaning the planets might be airless anyway. But this isn't confirmed, and right now, we don't have very good measurements of the atmospheres of the Trappist 1 planets. Before I get into the planets, I should mention that I will be working with the best possible data I can find as of May 2024. But the James Webb Space Telescope, among others, is still actively observing the system, and things are changing rapidly. Everything I say is still up for debate, so if you're watching this a few months or years from the time I'm publishing this, make sure to check if the things I say are still accurate. Things change fast in exoplanet science, and the things I say right now could be wildly out of date in only a few months. That being said, I'll try my best to remain as accurate as possible when describing what the worlds of Trappist 1 could be like. With that out of the way, the planets of the Trappist 1 system are extremely close together. All seven worlds are closer to the star than Mercury orbits the Sun, and some aren't much further apart from one another as Earth and the Moon are apart from each other. Trappist 1 is more comparable to Jupiter's Galilean moons than our solar system, orbit-wise. Each planet in the system is easily visible in the skies of others, some dwarfing the Moon and Earth's sky. The skies of the Trappist 1 planets likely look incredible, with several planets visible at all times. But what do these planets actually look like? We'll be going from closest to the star to furthest for this video, and so we'll be starting with Trappist 1b. Trappist 1b is the first, hottest, and biggest planet in the Trappist 1 system, though it's almost identical in mass to Trappist 1g. It's about 37% bigger than Earth in mass and 11% bigger in radius, giving it a surface gravity about 10% higher than Earth's. It takes only 36 hours to make an orbit of Trappist 1, and so is almost certainly tied to the lock to the star. Trappist 1b has been studied by the James Webb Space Telescope, and we already know a few interesting things about it. For one, it has a very dark surface, which could indicate it's made of volcanic rock. Thanks to tidal interactions between the star and the other six planets in the system, as well as its large size, Trappist 1b has a pretty high chance of being volcanically active, as do the other planets in the system. Trappist 1b has a dayside temperature of about 450 degrees Fahrenheit, or 230 Celsius. But despite being so close to its star, the planet probably wouldn't appear very bright if you were standing on it. This is because Trappist 1 emits most of its light in infrared, with very little visible light. So, despite being so close to the star, Trappist 1b probably doesn't get much more illuminated than Earth at sunset. Trappist 1b wasn't really expected to have an atmosphere. It orbits so closely to its star that it was expected to resemble a super Mercury of sorts. And that's exactly what James Webb suggests, as so far, no atmosphere has been detected around Trappist 1b. From what I can tell, it's most likely airless. But because this planet is probably volcanically active, it could resemble a super Io more than a super Mercury, with widespread volcanic activity, just grey and black instead of yellow like Io. Next planet in the system is Trappist 1c, and it's about 30% bigger than Earth in mass and 10% bigger in radius, and so is a bit smaller than Trappist 1b. It takes about two and a half days to orbit Trappist 1. Trappist 1c receives almost the exact same amount of energy Venus receives from the Sun, and so there is high hopes that C would be similar to Venus and have a dense atmosphere. 
As it turns out, this was just wishful thinking, and James Webb observations have ruled out a Venus-like atmosphere of TRAPPIST-1c. In fact, initial observations suggested that C was airless, just like B. But then it was found that TRAPPIST-1c was much brighter than B, and it had strange transit depths. Bare rocks are not supposed to do that. In fact, that was the name of a study published suggesting that TRAPPIST-1c does, in fact, have an atmosphere, and one up to 10% as dense as Earth's. For comparison, Mars's atmosphere is about 0.6% as thick as Earth's, so this possible atmosphere of TRAPPIST-1c would be very thick. Thick enough for clouds, wind, and weather. This atmosphere, if it exists, could have many different compositions, ranging from 10% of it to be made of water vapor, to oxygen dominated, to even an entirely different atmosphere made of steam three times thicker than Earth's. Or it could be airless and just oddly bright. Or maybe it's a combination of bright rocks and a thinner atmosphere. So far, we really don't know. But from what I can tell, TRAPPIST-1c very likely has an atmosphere of some kind. It seems that an atmosphere made of mostly oxygen and water vapor 10% as thick as Earth's fits the data best, but this is not confirmed yet. Whatever TRAPPIST-1c is, it's not a dark, airless rock like B. This is why, so far, I think TRAPPIST-1c is the most interesting planet of the entire TRAPPIST-1 system. Because it's the only one so far that has evidence for hosting an atmosphere. But it also has evidence that it is airless after all, so just keep that in mind. Other than that, TRAPPIST-1c has a surface temperature of about 224 degrees Fahrenheit, or 107 Celsius. So it's above the boiling point of water, so even though it might have a lot of water vapor in its atmosphere, it's unlikely to have lakes or oceans, and if it's not airless, it could be a steamy greenhouse planet. But this is all theoretical, as we don't yet definitively know what the environment of TRAPPIST-1c is like. But there's a good chance it has an atmosphere of some kind, unlike B. TRAPPIST-1d is the third planet of the system, and one of the smallest, being only 38% the mass of Earth, and 70% as big as Earth in radius. It's also just barely inside TRAPPIST-1's habitable zone, where temperatures are right for liquid water to exist. James Webb has observed TRAPPIST-1d, but the measurements have been difficult, to say the least. Noise from the star combined with the planet's small size make determining its environment extremely difficult. It takes about 4 days to orbit TRAPPIST-1, and has an estimated temperature of 55 degrees Fahrenheit, or 13 Celsius. But this has not been directly measured yet, it's only an estimate based on how much energy it receives. So far, there haven't been any conclusive results for the atmosphere of TRAPPIST-1d. Some studies suggested it could have a thick Venus-like atmosphere, but James Webb doesn't support or refute this. However, some of the problems in the data can be explained if TRAPPIST-1d is airless. This would make sense, since it is pretty small in orbit a star that used to be much more active. But we really don't know, even more than TRAPPIST-1c. But, in my personal opinion, TRAPPIST-1d having no significant atmosphere seems like the most likely option. But this could change drastically in the near future, as JWST looks at the planet again. TRAPPIST-1e e and f are the next two planets in the system, both within the habitable zone. TRAPPIST-1e is particularly exciting, because it's thought to have a particularly high Earth similarity index, where 1 is exactly like Earth, and 0 is as far away from Earth as you can get. But the ESI is a very faulty measurement, especially because we have no idea what TRAPPIST-1e is like. That's why I never use it, because it's impossible to say how similar to Earth a planet is when you don't know anything about it but its size and temperature. I can't find any studies suggesting TRAPPIST-1e has an atmosphere or not, but it is the densest planet of the system, indicating it has an extremely rocky composition. It's about 70% as massive as Earth and 90% of its radius, and has an estimated temperature of negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit, or negative 23 Celsius. But, like D, this will likely change once we get actual measurements of the planet. TRAPPIST-1e still has a chance of being habitable, but TRAPPIST-1 has, clearly, subverted our expectations about every planet in the system so far, like TRAPPIST-1c potentially having an oxygen-rich atmosphere instead of being a Venus analog. So, I wouldn't put the chances of TRAPPIST-1e being habitable very high. In fact, the more you research the system, the less and less likely it seems life could exist here. But that does not mean TRAPPIST-1 isn't interesting. Even if every single planet in the system turns out to be airless dead rocks, this is still an extremely interesting place. Planets don't need life to be interesting, and TRAPPIST-1 is a perfect example of this. TRAPPIST-1e is probably the last planet of the system we can expect to be rocky instead of icy. Everything beyond this point gets cold fast. TRAPPIST-1f, the fifth planet of the system, is nearly identical to Earth in mass and radius. Despite having an estimated temperature of negative 68 Fahrenheit, or negative 50 Celsius, it takes only 9 days to orbit TRAPPIST-1. So, like the other four planets mentioned so far, it's almost definitely tidally locked to TRAPPIST-1. Like E, we don't know if F has an atmosphere or not. 
However, some studies of planet formation in TRAPPIST-1 suggest that TRAPPIST-1f could host a primordial atmosphere made of water vapor and oxygen. But there's no actual evidence of this, it's just predictions based on simulations. TRAPPIST-1 e and f, along with h, are the least studied planets of TRAPPIST-1 system, so I really can't say a lot about them. However, the next planet, TRAPPIST-1g, is much more interesting. The reason we haven't gotten results on TRAPPIST-1d, e, and f yet is because a star has been interfering with measurements. But we seem to have gotten lucky with g, because we actually got some conclusive results about this planet very recently. We know that TRAPPIST-1g does not have a thick atmosphere similar to Venus, or one similar to Titan. However, an atmosphere similar to that of Mars is possible, and it could also be airless like b. This actually causes some problems for the rest of the system. TRAPPIST-1g is the second biggest planet in the system, very close in size to b. And it's much colder, so should have a much better chance of holding on to an atmosphere. If TRAPPIST-1g's atmosphere is thin like Mars's or non-existent, and TRAPPIST-1b and c have thin atmospheres or none, then it becomes extremely likely that none of the TRAPPIST-1 planets have thick atmospheres. If the measurements taken for b, c, and g so far turn out to be true, then d, e, f, and h probably look similar, being airless or only having thin atmospheres. This shatters any possibility for habitable planets in the system, as this would also mean oceans are incredibly unlikely. But TRAPPIST-1g's results are not confirmed yet. The study talking about g's atmosphere is yet to be officially published as of the time of making this video, so we'll just have to wait and see. TRAPPIST-1h is the last planet of the system, only being 32% Earth's mass and 70% its radius. It takes just 18 days to orbit TRAPPIST-1 and has an average temperature of negative 150 degrees Fahrenheit, or negative 100 Celsius. This is between the temperatures of Mars and Jupiter in our solar system, so TRAPPIST-1h is likely covered in ice. Because this planet is outside the habitable zone and difficult to observe, there haven't been any definitive results on its environment. But, if I had to guess, this could be a world pretty similar to Europa or Enceladus, with large geologic activity from interactions with other planets. But so far, we don't know. There are no other planets confirmed to exist in the TRAPPIST-1 system beyond this point. The system is in a very delicate balance, so the presence of additional planets could throw the whole thing off. So, planets beyond TRAPPIST-1h are unlikely to exist. TRAPPIST-1 is, as I've hopefully shown so far, one of the most interesting systems in the whole Milky Way. But we know next to nothing about this place. JWST isn't starting to show what the worlds of this system are like, but it's going to be a while before we know anything more than what I've said in this video. TRAPPIST-1 is still an incredibly new discovery, and there's still a lot to learn about it. While life and habitable planets are seemingly very unlikely in the system, that doesn't make it any less interesting. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out the rest of my Grand Tour series, as well as my videos about exoplanets and space colonization.